So I've been driving this Tesla for the last 18 months and I've got many videos which describe the overall driving and ownership experience of driving this car. But the question I've got now is what is it like to rent an electric car? I'm heading off to Northern Norway to find out what that experience is like. So naturally, the first place you want to find out is on the car rental websites. I went onto the Hertz website and I wanted five days worth of renting in Tromsø in Norway. And what I found was that the cheapest rental car was costing £250 for five days. That was a Toyota Igo sized car. It was far too small. Now, if you step up to a Volkswagen Golf, that's £270. But if you step up to an electric car of the same size as a Volkswagen Golf, such as an ID3, that's £290. So the only other question at that point was, is there any charging available at the hotel? So I found a hotel, I phoned them up, and they told me there was a charger very, very close. So I did my research, did my homework, found it was a brand called Recharge. And I thought, excellent, we've got all the components needed to try out an electric car. So I went ahead and booked that electric car. Contrary to the booking information I had, there is actually a staffed office with Hertz at Tromsø Airport. You're not just faced with a self-service kiosk. Now, the process in Norway is very straightforward. You do your checking in online for the hire car where you're entering in your driving license details and your passport details and your credit card details. Uh, when you arrive at the office, they just simply cross-reference your actual driving license against what you've entered and then they give you the keys and they ask you to sign the form to say that there is no damage or whatnot. Once we had our key, we were heading out to the car park where I had my very first British moment of the holiday. So let's just open the door, let the lady in. In you get. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> right, in you get, this way round. <laughs> Let's get the lady in. There you go. No. <laughs> right, now I just need to go around and just check that there's no damage. Any dings or dents or all that kind of stuff. The joys loading up in the snow this is all the snow drifts it's kind of just building up around the car and look at that so it's going to be an interesting challenge but now first thing I have to say I'm able to get one big suitcase two carry-ons in the back that's no problem at all so then all I have to do is worry about getting my big rucksack my big uh, trolley in here well one thing we do have we have studded tires which is uh, very handy uh, given that there's so much snow around what I need is a uh, is a brush they said there was a snow brush included in the uh, in the car and an ice scraper and and I can't see oh there's an ice scraper yeah all right I guess we just have to do with this this little thing here that's all we've got okay so we're in there's no snow brush that we could see so I just used my arm to brush it off so what I'm gonna do is use Google Maps we're gonna go to the Polar Museum so that is a Polariat so Polar Museum we'll just do directions and then we'll uh, do start and then we'll... this should be similar to my Volkswagen my old Volkswagen Golf there we go so that's that let's just do that that works fine okay and then drive so we just do that so now we're in drive mode god everything is just so white turn left onto flight pass Vega right, brakes work well, there doesn't seem to be any regen on these on this, so I'll probably have to just figure out what's going on. Turn right onto Feltway 862 E8. Okay, we'll turn right here. Ah, oh, you have to use your brakes on this. Yes. 
I normally am used to regen braking. Okay. In 50 meters. Okay. Now I could uh, do with a slightly lower temperature on this because oh, I'm. Please, I'm burning up. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my coat on. Oh my goodness, it's set to... How please, do you do that? Please, I'll die. It's, it's coming down, so it's fine. So it's 95% charge. So it was supposed to be fully charged when we got the car. So loads of uh, snowplow action nice. going on. Yeah, and this is a big tunnel that goes underneath the... Uh, Bridge? The, no, it goes underneath the, the whole town. Oh, does it? Yeah, yeah. Have a look. So this goes right underneath Tromsø. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's great. So... Okay, so we're at the Polar Museum. A um, couple of things. It showed a percentage of battery uh, when I was driving. It was, it was over here. Um, and when I'm parked, I can't see the percentage of the battery. Um, but uh, what I can see is that uh, we've got a range of 193 kilometers. And I prefer, I prefer turning it into percentage and yeah, it's, uh, it was also very difficult to figure out how to park it because we've got uh, neutral, reverse and drive. And then my mistake was that Brit B, I think, is, uh, is, is regenerative braking, which is a bit of a confusion. Um, so we'll get out of here and we'll, uh, well, I'll, I'll pay for the parking and uh, we'll uh, see how that goes. So pretty much all parking in the middle of Tromsø is pay and display. Um, or you can use this uh, app here. You probably have to pay uh, an extra service fee for that but here um, you've got uh, the option to uh, select English and you can uh, uh, scan your card here um, and then insert the time here's an example on how much time I get so it's 120 kroner and it uh, lasts about three and a half hours which isn't all that long to be quite frank Right, let's uh, go to the Polar Museum. Now, I won't talk about this museum in too much detail here. My other sister video to this video will cover my holiday experience in a lot more detail. This video is purely about the hire car experience. Now, when talking about electric cars in Norway, we also need to talk about road tolls. In Norway, we have this nationwide network called Autopass. You have a little chip uh, RFID device which is mounted into your windscreen and you drive underneath various toll stations and your account is automatically charged. Now all hire car companies, at least the reputable ones, have got this already included in their cars. So that will automatically be added onto your hire car account. Now, in Tromsø, we have various toll stations around the city, including the main bridge, which goes from the Tromsø island to the mainland of Norway. Now, the thing to note is that road tolls are no longer free for electric cars, but you still receive a considerable discount. In this case, it's about 50%. Okay, so here we are on the E8, driving down towards our hotel in Nordkjosbotten. And uh, this is a 70 kilometer an hour road, as you can see. It's uh, quite white, but it's, uh, it's, it's no trouble to drive. Um, in terms of driving this car, um, I think uh, the car is very well put together. It's, uh, it's a Volkswagen. Compared to my Volkswagen Golf, the materials are actually I'd say they're probably slightly cheaper than uh, what I had on my old on my old VW Golf. Um, I figured out how to use um, the regen braking. Um, the uh, uh, switch gear is pretty much the same as the Volkswagen Golf. The thing which I don't like is if you point towards that, I can't switch on the map, and I can't switch on the radio. I have no idea how to navigate through this in order to switch on the map. If I go to locations, it just simply says add current position as a charging location, which I just think is uh, terrible. Oh, look at this, Rachel. Look at this. Look at all of this. Uh, white out. White out. It's, it's a white out with all of this uh, out. traffic. Glories. Yes. So, yeah, um, there's a lot of figuring out to do with the ID free. It's not as intuitive as. Uh, what I thought. What I will say, which is good about this car, um, 
soft headliner and what that means is that um, the noise levels inside the car are actually uh, a lot more subdued compared to uh, a Model 3 and Model 3 at this speed would be quite noisy. Bear in mind I'm driving on studded winter tyres and it doesn't sound all that bad in terms of noise levels at all. Um, so yes, um, welcome to Norway. It's, uh, it's all uh, it's all rather blizzardy, but they do a pretty decent job of keeping these main roads uh, clear of snow. Um, so uh, yeah, not bad at all. Now all told, the journey from the airport to the hotel via the museum was about 50 miles. We started off with 100% charge and we ended up with just 61% charge once we arrived at the hotel. But in all other regards, the hire car experience was very good. But as we parked up, at the charger for the hotel, the experience of renting an electric car was about to go downhill very fast indeed. Oh no. <laughs> Add to the start. No, 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 I haven't stalled. What have you done? I've just realised that the charger port is on the wrong, on the other side. Mm. Mm, right. Bad bad today, bad yes. bad today. Very bad. Right, there we go. Oh. Uh, driving's not getting any better. <laughs> no. Right, how do you put that? Uh, let's just turn that off. Right. So this is me plugged in to here. So now I need to figure out how to use this. So I finally got this uh, ID free to charge up. I've been spending an hour dealing with this. The number of swear words which were uttered trying to get this thing to charge um, was actually... Um, very little because I had my girlfriend with me um, but if I if I didn't have my girlfriend with me there would be a lot of swear words with this it took an hour let me show you what the procedure is supposed to be so you're supposed to uh, plug in your cable like this just like that and if you if you read this here it says plug in the cable first and then sc scan this QR code this one right here and I scanned it and I opened up uh, the website and you then have credentials to uh, type in. You need to just type in your credit card. Um, that was relatively straightforward, that only took 20 seconds. Um, I had to authorize the transaction with my uh, uh, banking uh, service via text message. They gave me a six digit code. Once that was authorized, nothing happened. And what was going on here was that when you plug this in for the first time, you, this, this light turns white. And this, uh, when, it, when it turns white, that basically says it's communicating uh, or trying to communicate. But the thing is, is that this charger isn't yet communicating until the payment is authorized. So what happens is that the charger on the car just times out and then this light turns red and when it turns red then this charger um, uh, says oh uh, there's no car here um, we're not gonna uh, talk to anyone so then I, I, I tried this uh, attempt three times went on to uh, the telephone support they said it wasn't properly latched in but actually it was latched in um, then they suggested I try another charger. So I went over here, tried those chargers. Those are rapid chargers, they're more expensive. And they didn't work either. Exactly the same reason. This charging port decides to uh, turn red. It just times out. Um, it's ridiculous. And uh, they were suggesting I, I, I download a, an easy par cap. They've had good success. Uh, they weren't so sure about the QR code, even, even though these are the... Um, companies which uh, supply the, the, this, uh, this charging station. So um, I just thought to myself after checking in at the hotel, um, you know what, why don't we pay for the credit card first, scan the QR code, pay for the credit card, authorize the, authorize the transaction and then plug it in. And then it worked. So now uh, we're charging up at uh, probably 11 kilowatts and um, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, charged at uh, five and a half Norwegian kroner 
per kilowatt hour. So it should be charged up to 100% uh, by about eight o'clock-ish. Um, the rapid charges over there are about 6.8 krona per kilowatt hour. And from what I've seen, we've got 300 kilowatt uh, chargers at Circle K, um, uh, at Circle K garage, um, and they charge about eight krona per kilowatt hour. So of course, I'm in no hurry to charge up. So this is, this is perfect. So, um, yeah, what, what can I say about the ID3? Um, in terms of the ride quality, I think it's very good. The noise levels are very good, but the software is awful. Um, it, 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 you should not have issues like this with charging. Um, it should be completely effortless. Um, it, you should be able to uh, plug it in to a charger which is not communicating and it should just happily wait there listening for a communication signal from the charger to start charging. That doesn't happen with this ID3. Um, I can't go onto the map. Let, let's go in, let's go in here. I'm going right, I'm going proper Bjorn Newland on, on, on me. Right, so go into here. Well, this is taking a while to boot up. Um, I don't have this issue with the Tesla Model 3. Um, here we are. So first of all, it says offline or online mode. I don't care. That, that's not particularly in interesting. Um, sorry, this function's not available. And you just look at this and you just think to yourself, all right, I just want to turn on the radio um, and you look at these uh, menu options you got charging um, so this is charging up this is fine for when we're actually charging but when you're driving this menu th th this is still the option this is still the default option this sh this menu should not even exist when you're driving um, locations that looks that sounds like a map to me so when you click on that does that look like a map no that's not a map um how do you operate the radio um i want some tunes and does that look like a radio no does that look like a radio no does that look like a radio absolutely not does that look like a radio no does that look like a radio no um and i think sandy munro made the the, the 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 classic point when you are picking up a hire car at an airport, you're in a hurry. You just want to get on with it. And when you've got uh, functions which just don't work that require you to actually read the manual, um, that's really bad design. And it's a real shame. Um, um, I'd say, you know, the the seats are definitely on the on the cheaper side, but you can get some nicer seats. Um, uh, I like the rubber floor mats. They're, they're very good for, for winter conditions like what we've got in, in Norway. Yeah, the software is awful. When we started driving the next morning, we got into the car and found that 2% charge had been lost overnight. Temperature that night had dropped down to minus seven. And on the way to our reindeer sleigh ride, we found the temperatures at the roads away from the fjords were dropping down to about minus 15. Now, the journey to the reindeer centre was just under 70 kilometres, about 45 miles. Once we got there, we looked at what the state of charge was. It was about 61%, same as it was uh, yesterday. OK, here's where we are in terms of energy consumption. Uh, so we've travelled 81 kilometres uh, since uh, uh, we charged up uh, at the hotel. And uh, we're using 227 watt hours per kilometer, which is about roughly 280 watt hours per mile. So it is similar in terms of efficiency compared to the uh, Tesla Model 3. And bear in mind the temperatures we've been driving at, uh, minus seven to minus uh, 15. So that's, that's not too bad. But uh, in terms of uh, state of charge, 55%. So we don't have a very big battery on this uh, car at all. So after our reindeer sleigh ride, it was very obvious that we would need to recharge somewhere in order to continue our journey. The question was where? Well, you can get a app called Charge Finder and it also works in the UK. It's very similar to ZapMap, but it seems to have a global reach. As you can see, we've got the inch charger 
uh, close to my house. But if we go across to Drums, there are plenty of chargers which are showing up, many of which are above 100 kilowatts. My plan was to reach Lungseidet on the Lungen Peninsula and use the 200 kilowatt charger there. Was it going to work? Well, we'll find out. So now we've arrived onto the ferry to uh, Lungen Peninsula. Um, one of the things you can see is that the car is actually really clean. Um, they don't use grit here at all. Okay, one thing I noticed was that You've got drive, neutral, reverse. Neutral is indeed neutral. It does not put it into park. Um, what does put it into park is that lever, is that button there. And can you see that from, from here? Absolutely not. It's just like a Tesla, but it's, uh, it's not so obvious. It's not signed so well. It's not labeled so well. It's actually right behind this steering wheel, which is a bit... So the auto pass system doesn't just work for road tolls. It also works for ferries as well. As you can see from the price list here, you can get 148 krona if you have an auto pass for an ordinary petrol or diesel car. But if you have a company agreement, you can get 49 krona with auto pass if you have an electric car. And that's the price we paid in this example with Hertz, which has such a company agreement. So that was very good indeed. Okay, so we are going to be looking for a 200 kilowatt, right. looking for a 200 kilowatt charger, um, and uh, it's supposed to be around about here somewhere. You reached your destination. Be at the petrol station. It could be at the petrol station. Let's have a look. Um, no, it wasn't at the petrol station. It was further behind if you turn right after the petrol station. This was going to be the start of a complete nightmare. So this is where we are parked up. It is a, uh, we've got four 200 kilowatt chargers here. Uh, and then we've got some uh, AC chargers. And uh, this is a company called uh, Evany and uh, the deal here is that you're supposed to either scan this QR code, uh, this one here, or you're supposed to use the app, uh, which is Billcraft. Now, if you scan the QR code, you get lots of Norwegian and you eventually have to get an SMS uh, which, in order to verify your telephone number. And if you download the app, you're supposed to type in your telephone number, get an SMS to verify it. Did the SMS arrive? No. Do I have enough charge to continue my journey? No. Um, this is a thing about uh, uh, driving in Norway on a Volkswagen ID3. It's, it, it really doesn't have enough range to do even relatively short uh, day trips. Um, so now I'm in a situation where I'm reliant on apps uh, which don't work and I, I phoned up telephone support they said they've had another British person who's had difficulty um, they are giving me a free charge which is very nice of them but it's not for very long it's only to get uh, it's only just enough to get me uh, through to the, uh, the, the the next charger which unfortunately is going to be uh, back at the hotel rather than going on to Skiervoy which is what I was hoping to have um, so overall, um, this experience of using an electric car, a rental electric car in Norway, is uh, turning out to be um, a, a lot worse than uh, I, I originally planned. Um, and that's a real shame. Now, it took over 45 minutes of figuring things out and being on the telephone in order for Evany to agree to a free charge. I offered my credit card details over the telephone, but they did not have the systems to process it. Um, what I will say is that it really did shake my confidence a great deal. Now, uh, they are certainly not the only charging company which requires SMS verification. That night, I also downloaded the Circle K app because Circle K is a very large charging provider in Norway. And they also require SMS verification. And did they give me the verification code? I'm afraid they didn't. 
there was one other option available for me to charge up quickly whilst on the road. But first of all, we had some Husky rides to do. Here we are, we're on the E6 and E8 route. We're heading up the uh, right, uh, the east side of Lungsfjord. Um, plan is to get to Finland. Um, but on the way to Finland, I want to uh, call at the Tesla supercharger. Um, reason is, uh, I've got a Tesla account. Uh, and this supercharger is open to non-Teslas. And uh, I want to see what that uh, process looks like uh, from a Tesla driver perspective. The question is gonna be, will Tesla come up with the goods? Because that could be very handy tomorrow when we uh, head off to the polar park. So at Ski Bottom, we still had 250 kilometers of range according to the ID3. So instead of charging up first and then heading to the Finnish border, we decided to head to the Finnish border first. As we got closer, that 250 kilometers of range got reduced down to 113 kilometers of range by the time we got to the border. This, in part, was down to the altitude we were going up. The high point on the road was 528 meters. Now, given the distance driven was only about 46 kilometers or so, um, it was quite a stark reduction in range. Now, one other thing to note is that because it is a hire car, they do have terms and conditions for driving across the border. You need written permission from Hertz in order to drive any hire car across the border in Norway. Now, on the way back down to Ski Bottom, we started with a range of 113 kilometers. And by the time we got back down to Ski Bottom, the range was 120 kilometers. So we had gained seven kilometers of range despite driving 46 kilometers. So here I am at Ski Bottom and we are charging. So uh, what did I do? I went onto my Tesla app, I selected my account, I selected charge my non-Tesla, I selected this location, I plugged this in and then I selected plug 1B and I said start charging and within about 30 seconds it started charging. Let's take a closer look. So here we are, nice green light, all very uh, handy. Let's go and take a look in the, in here. Right, let's go through this online mode yes you can see i've figured out the map you press this button to skip between the map and the vehicle so we are charging up they don't tell me how many kilowatts it's 150 kilowatt uh, kilometers per hour um, so we are now charging that's very good so i'm very very pleased okay so we have finished charging so we'll just uh, pull this out Put it back in here. I have to say this cable is not used to being pulled the right way. Uh, as you can see, if I'm charging at this station, then of course a, a Tesla cannot back up and use this station. Uh, but of course it's quite empty here. There's what? There's one, two, three, four, five, six stalls. There's one Tesla at the beginning. Uh, now there's uh, just uh, just me so it's not an issue here but this is an issue um, going forward when more and more uh, uh, Tesla superchargers open up to non-Teslas this should be fixed with a version 4 supercharger which has got a different design of cable which is longer so it should be the case that um, you can use uh, you can use a particular supercharger from a particular parking bay. So we'll see how that works uh, in the future. I was elated that the supercharger just worked. I will have to say, however, that the charging speed was quite slow with the ID3. It was about 56 kilowatts when it topped out. Now, given the ID3 theoretically has a 100 kilowatt maximum charge rate, uh, that is uh, quite disappointing for the ID3. However, we did have a diner at the location and we enjoyed a pizza as part of an early dinner so that we could then go out and see the Northern Lights, which unfortunately we failed to see. If I wasn't a Tesla owner, 
I would have faced the prospect of signing up for a Tesla account on the roadside. From what I remember, I didn't have to type in a verification code into my telephone in order to verify my telephone number. So in that regard, I'm fairly confident that a non-member, a non-Tesla owner can just simply sign up to a Tesla account uh, and use the superchargers. Now this gave us the confidence to drive onto the Polar Park the very next day because the return journey we absolutely needed to recharge and the only other option apart from the superchargers was uh, recharge and also Circle K and recharge in my experience are quite busy chargers and as you've seen with Circle K the app doesn't work for foreign telephone number holders. So here we are at Setamoan Supercharger and I have parked here which renders that supercharger and that parking space unavailable. It means I'm taking up the space for two superchargers and this is a design issue with the uh, supercharger uh, locations. Yes, this would annoy me in the UK uh, where there is a, a much, uh, there's much less availability for superchargers, but here uh, there is still one supercharger left. If we go over here, we can see that uh, there's awkward parking. So we've we really uh, we don't have any space uh, left, and this is one of the things that makes me very suspicious when I'm driving my own Tesla about uh, supercharger stations which uh, are available to everyone um, they, they, it just won't work in a place like the UK unless you have an overabundance of superchargers so we are approaching Tromso now we're on the uh, east side of the fjord we're going to go to a charger um, which is run by Eon um, which uh, a lot of uh, people uh, have their electricity supplied from in the UK and um, I downloaded the app it was suggesting uh, 2.5 krona per kilowatt hour which actually makes it the cheapest charge but if you go onto a Norwegian app um, it suggests something like five and a half krona per kilowatt hour so uh, it's going to be interesting to see what whether it will actually work or um, whether whether I'm going to have more nonsense but uh, we're going to have a, a, a morning of uh, sightseeing in Tromsø and uh, then uh, drop off the hire car about lunchtime. Okay it took a little while to figure this one out but this is uh, usable by the Eon app. Now um, it wasn't particularly obvious that this was a charger. These receptacles could not be opened. What happens is that uh, the receptacle uh, opens up once you've authorized your credit card and then you plug in your uh, car uh, that, and then you plug in your cable so I'm charging and we're charging at two and a half krona per kilowatt hour which uh, is also shown here um, Easy Park is a different app you can use but I'm using the Eon app which uh, is excellent now one thing to note about this charger is that if you are an Octopus Energy customer you will have no doubt received an Octopus Electroverse RFID card in your post. Now the Electroverse app actually shows this charger as being available to use with this RFID card. So it's very interesting to note that uh, the Electroverse is not just confined so it's very interesting to note that the Electroverse, as Octopus Energy puts it, is not just confined to the United Kingdom. That said, now that said, there aren't too many chargers which are available under this app in Norway. When Rachel says it's upstairs, Rachel is always right, aren't you, Rachel? Yes, yeah, so you didn't know how to work with the electric charger. The last one I had to help you out. Yes. Um, you didn't recognise it as an electric charger. Yes. Two, you didn't know how to operate it. Oh, yeah. So I'm now thinking, if I'd been coming out and helping you, we might have not had problems all this time. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first time looking at it, and I figured it out. I suppose so, Rachel. What did you say, Anthony? Um, well... Uh, yes. <laughs> correct. We'll give you the keys next time, shall we? Yeah. 
So I think we should probably have a YouTube video where Rachel uh, tries to charge up some cars and use some apps. I think that would be excellent. However, in this instance, I think Rachel will probably veto that suggestion and we will just simply have to accept that Rachel knows best and she is always right. Okay, so I've now ended the charge, used the app for that. Um, the It took quite a bit of effort to pull the uh, plug out of here even though I ended the charge, um, which was a, a bit of a design issue. So watch out for that. Just give it a good proper yank. Now you may be asking, why am I charging the car up, given that we're retaining the hire car so soon? Well, the terms and conditions of Hertz hire car rentals is that you need to return the car with the same charge as when you took it out. So by definition, if you have received a car fully charged, then it stands to reason that you have to return it fully charged. The question is, what is fully charged? My brain suggests that 99% charge is not fully charged. However, is that the case? I do not know. I asked the question to Hertz and they gave me a rather vague answer by email. Right, there we go. High car complete. So tomorrow will mark the 18 months that I've owned a Tesla. And those 18 months have been a fantastic ownership experience. But the experience of renting an electric car is completely different. This Volkswagen ID3 first edition has only got a range of about 200-ish miles officially. What that translates to is an actual range under typical Norwegian winter conditions of about 110 miles if you're lucky. That's the first problem with uh, renting an electric car. The second problem with renting an electric car is that you as a tourist or a business person are completely unprepared for the charging experience on the roadside. If you rent a petrol or diesel car, the experience of filling up with petrol or diesel isn't very different uh, in various countries. The only variation you get is whether you pay for petrol before or after you fill up with fuel. Here, every single experience is completely different and some of those experiences have nearly left me stranded out here in Norway and that is extremely stressful. It's a bad taste in my mouth. The final reason why renting an electric car um, is not such a good idea is to do with the rental terms and conditions themselves. Hertz require me to return this car uh, at the same level of charge as when I pull it, uh, took it out. This was fully charged 100% when I took it out. Um, I've returned it with 77% charge, even though I charged it up in Tromsø. With a petrol or diesel car, you can fill it up in five minutes and it will show you the full indicator for 50 miles before it starts to come off the full indication. With a electric car, it will come off the 100% charge within the first uh, mile or so. And it takes ages to charge up. It's the wrong experience altogether. When you finish your journey, that's the time when you want to plug in, just like you do at home. But with renting, you don't have that option. Hertz will charge me 250 kroner just to plug it in, in addition to the cost of electricity. And I think that's very unsatisfactory. So five minutes after filming that, we returned the keys to the Hertz office. They asked the charge level on the car. I said 77% and they said, ah, it's okay. A perfect Norwegian conclusion to this high car experience. However, it would be much better if these things were written down in a much less ambiguous fashion. I do have several suggestions on how the Hertz high car experience can be improved. The first suggestion is to delete the service charge of 250 kroner. It's absurd. It only takes a few minutes to plug in a car and you can be doing all the other preparations for getting your hire car ready for the next customer whilst the car is charging up. The second suggestion I have is that they need to include a whole bunch of RFID cards for each of the popular charging stations. The overall objective is to make roadside charging as seamless as possible. The auto pass system of road tolls and ferry charges is excellent and the charges just simply appear on the end of my Hertz statement once I dropped off my hire car. This should be the same experience when it comes to roadside charging with any provider. Well, car, sweet car. Time to get some luggage in. 
and let's get back home. Well, here we are at the airport roundabout. One thing I just wanted to mention was that the state of charge when I got back to the car was 75%, and that was the same state of charge that I left it at five days earlier. So I am very pleased with uh, the performance of the Tesla, given that we've had some cold nights uh, whilst, I've, whilst we've been away here. So one question remains is, would the renting experience be any different if you rented a Tesla Model 3 as opposed to the Volkswagen ID3 that I had? I think the answer to that question is it will be quite a lot worse than owning a Tesla Model 3. Uh, Hertz do indeed rent out Tesla Model 3s, especially in North America, and that is rolling out in many other markets. They have a massive handicap compared to owning a Tesla Model 3. You do not have any rights to access your rented Tesla Model 3 through the Tesla app. That means you can't control or monitor your rented Tesla Model 3 in any way. But all the other aspects of renting an electric car, such as a lack of access to cheap, reliable electricity at your base, all those disadvantages uh, remain. I can drive this Tesla Model 3 from here to Braemar and back again, 125 miles round trip. That's a similar distance to the journeys I've been doing um, in the Volkswagen ID3. And this uh, can be returned back home with 55% charge, even though I'm uh, setting off with 90% uh, charge. So there is a massive handicap with having a low range rented car. I'm not going to be renting an electric car uh, for some time to come. I want to see a lot more hotel charges in these foreign countries. I want to see a much more consistent experience in terms of charging up with different providers. But right now it's a complete nightmare to charge up in Norway, which is the most developed country in the world when it comes to electric vehicle infrastructure. But in the meantime, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I'll talk to you again very soon.